Hello, welcome. We are here at MTAC Dueling Dragons, and I am happy to be joined by Sun Wong Cho. Sun Wong, thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, thank you for having me. Absolutely, it's, it's a pleasure. Um, stuff I usually like to start the interview, just ask, uh, what's some things that you've been working on lately that you're able to share with us? Uh, yeah, right now I'm working on Delicious in Dungeon. It's on Netflix, and it's a great show. I play Senshi in that. Uh, and, um, yeah, that's one of the big ones I'm on right now. That he is such a fun character, and that mm. is a tremendous show. Uh, really been enjoying you in that. Nice. Um, so let me ask, what made you take an interest in acting? For me, uh, my friend, uh, back when I was in high school, a friend of mine would write radio plays, and yeah. so uh, he would cast all of his friends to do the voices, and I was one of them. And it was through that where I really discovered how much I enjoyed acting. That's fantastic. Um, I, I think we all kind of have that friend at some point in our lives, mm. you know, the, someone who's just really creative. And I think it's great that you're able to um, pick up that love of acting from, from interacting in that way. Mm -hmm. I think that's really beautiful. Yeah. Who would you say has had the biggest impact on your career? Oh, biggest impact on my career. Uh, I guess it would be all the voice actors I listened to when I was a kid. You know, you have your your Corey Burton, your Jeff Bennett, your Jennifer Hale. You know, all these uh, actors who you grew up hearing on Saturday morning cartoons. Um, I would say they were definitely a big influence on me wanting to do this career. So I would say them for sure. I think that's hugely relatable too because mm. I, I think... A lot of us, uh, you know, especially here, <laughs> here at Nanomicon. Right. Um, you know, we have those those voices, those characters that we connect with. Mm -hmm. And, you know, because the, the characters are fictional, um, I, I guess kind of the next best thing is kind of connecting with those actors and those voices. Sure. And that, um, I know for me, like, that, that's why being, being privileged enough to do these interviews with mm -hmm. folks like yourself is really special because um, you get to make those human connections mm. and, find, and just find out about the individual as opposed to just, you know, listening to the voices and the characters and all that. Right, right. As an actor, what do you think is the biggest challenge for you? Um, I guess the biggest challenge is just, uh, I think maintaining an acting career is a challenge uh, for any of us because you just have to keep, you know, auditioning and booking uh, if you're lucky uh, and so I think it's a mix of you know just uh, keeping the momentum going and also just being able to you know deal with rejection or missing out on things uh, you know I think it's important to um, keep your mental health you know uh, keep keep your mind healthy and uh, just you know try to not let things get you down um, and just maintaining the career really is the hardest part. Yeah, I'm always interested to know how people, you know, how actors keep themselves motivated because it is such a competitive field. And even if you're successful, mm. you know, you're still sending, you know, getting one role for every, I don't know, 10, 20, 50, 100 auditions that you send out into the world. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's got to be draining, like you said. It's, it's got to be imperative that you take care of your mental health like that. Yeah, I always tell people, you know, just really, if you manage to book something, you know, really appreciate, you know, or, you know, enjoy your successes. Like, don't just, uh, you know, be like, oh, I missed out on that thing. You know, be proud of what you've achieved. And, you know, I also tell people to have a good life balance outside of work and make sure you're fulfilled outside of your career. Because uh, I think you, relying too much on your career to be uh, happy is very unhealthy. So I, I always encourage people to have a good life balance overall. I think that's good advice, just in general, you know, especially when it comes to acting, but also just in general, because mm -hmm. it's very easy in life for us to get down, down on ourselves. You know, we don't meet whatever sort of arbitrary goals that we have for ourselves. Mm -hmm. and. You know, it can it can be easy to lose focus of the things that we have achieved. I think that's that's an excellent point that you make. Mm. 
Um, what are some of your interests outside of acting? Uh, I'm a big board gamer. I play a lot of board games. Uh, let's see. Outside, you said outside of acting. Yeah. I mean, I I watch anime. I uh, I'll do escape rooms here and there. I love trying different restaurants. Uh, I'm pretty active outside of my work. You know, just doing. I have all these hobbies of I'm pursuing. Um, board game is probably the biggest one, though. Favorite board game? Marvel Legendary. Ooh. Yeah. Um. I've been collecting sets for Marvel Champions, which is a, oh, a, nice. different, a yeah. different game. I've but, played that, yeah. Um, I, I think of that one more closer to Have you played Sentinels of the Multiverse? I have, yes. Yeah, that one came first. Um, mm. That one's been a big uh, favorite of mine. Nice. Uh, Lords of Waterdeep. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if you guys are, are big uh, Baldur's Gate fans and you want to still play around in that world in a board game, uh, Lords of Waterdeep can certainly be worse than that. Mm. Um, our, our sometimes co-host and, and always friend Dylan uh, he helps over in analog gaming and mm. uh, he's also just a, a huge board game fan and nice uh, <laughs> before before we moved to uh, the apartment we lived in now uh, he had a much larger collection of board mm. games and had to had to pair some of that off a couple of years ago but uh he still has a, a fairly formidable <laughs> collection. Nice. And, uh, you know, we've been fortunate enough to play a lot of games mm-hmm. because of that. Um, so one question that, that I received from someone that I've been asking is, what's something that you love to talk about, but you're convinced everyone else is tired of hearing you talk about it? Um, probably board games, for those who are not <laughs> as into board games as me. Um me telling people to watch Chiaya Furu, my favorite anime. I'm sure they're tired of hearing me talk about that. Um, yeah, I, I uh, probably those two come to mind. Excellent choices. Yeah. Excellent choices. Um, Chiaya Furu, I think, is available through Sentai. Mm, I think it's on Crunchyroll. I mean, yeah, for purchase, I believe it's Sentai, yeah. and then yeah, it's for streaming, streaming on, on Crunchyroll, Crunchy. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So you you have those options if. You know, you're one of those folks that's like, oh, yeah, we need to get back to collecting physical media. That's that's how you do it. Mm. But, you know, also, there's nothing wrong with watching anime on Crunchyroll whatsoever. Sure. I appreciate your time. This has been a lot of fun. Thanks for, you know, letting us get to know you a little bit. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the con. Yeah, no, thanks for having me. I've uh, I'm, It's going to be back at Tech, and I'm having a great time. Thanks for listening to yet another production of the Awesome Cast, your podcast for everything awesome. You can find us online at awesomecast.com, O S M C A S T dot com, or, you know, wherever you find your podcast, just search for Awesome Cast. You can also find us on the social medias, Awesome Cast at Twitter or on Facebook. Of course, you can also find our wonderful interview guru, the greatest living interviewer, John Robbins at J5 is Live. Or perhaps you'd like to follow our amazing editor, Anna at Angel Dark Fire, or just me, at It's Basil Time on Twitter. Our theme song is produced by DJ Inabito, and you can find him online at djinabito.com. And once again, thanks for listening to the Awesome Cast. We appreciate you.